out here the hard way. I crack open that little spacesuit, and then we see what your friends out there have to say about you breathing in all this contaminated air. So what's it gonna be, O'Brien? Yes? Okay, okay. You remember the rooftop of the old brewery. I put a woman on your chopper, she was wounded. Yes. I remember, a, a knife wound, she, she was cut pretty bad. I went to the refugee camp that you said you were taking her to. Everyone was dead, so I'm gonna ask you again, how did you survive? We weren't there. We were diverted south to another camp. Like you said, the camp in Belknap was overrun, so they moved us south to a camp outside of Silver Lake. Were there survivors? You mean now? I don't know. I, I was transferred to the research unit. Did she survive? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, 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 I can find out. I, I can check. You, you have one of our radios. That's how you... Uh, I, I can't promise anything, but I'll, I'll check. Uh-huh, and I'm gonna go with you. No, you, you can't. Please, you don't... Hey, don't understand, but fucking shoot you. Not before I shoot you. Okay, look, if you're gonna fucking kill me, do it, okay? I did my job. Did the woman, your wife... I put her on oxygen, I gave her an IV. I kept her alive. I got in a lot of trouble for that. She was septic, she wasn't gonna make it, but I got out of the mass unit. I saved her goddamn life! O'Brien, <sighs> report. I have to go. Please, I, you have to get out of here. You don't know these men. You don't know Brian, what they're capable of. If I don't hear from you, I don't care how long it takes, I'm gonna track you down. And I'm gonna do a lot worse than snap off an antenna. I'm sorry about your wife. But you're not the only one who lost someone that night. A few days ago, I asked you if you remembered that Nero asshole, O'Brien. Uh, yeah, Deke, it's, it's all uh, kind of a blur. Yeah, yeah, okay. Get some shut eye booze, man. I'll tell you about it later. When are we riding out of here, Deke? Oh, <laughs> soon, Boozer. Real soon. Look, <clears throat> as soon as your arm heals, we're gonna be riding the hell out of here. Yeah, Deke. O'Brien, are you out there? O'Brien! Oh, you son of a bitch, you better radio me, you hear me, O'Brien? I know you're on this channel, god damn it. Okay, you better get back to me or I'm going to track you yeah. down. Yeah. You got that? Yeah. Oh, god damn it, oh, come on! O'Brien, get back to me. Did you 
track down the chopper. Was it the same guy, the one we saw on the roof that night? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it was him. And did he remember us? Sarah, what happened? I don't know. They got diverted south. He, he remembered her, but he doesn't know what happened to her. You're not... You don't think she's still alive? What? No. I mean, no. Look, I'm not stupid, Boozer. I just want to find out, you know, what happened to her. Where she died. I don't need to find any peace, Jesus, please. I, I gotta go, all right? Deacon out. Oh, dear. This is it. Yeah, not bad. They're coming.
Radio Free Oregon. The truth shall set you free. This earth is a gift for us all. To use as we see fit. To provide for ourselves and our families. <laughs> I'm not saying this. It's the Lord that gave us dominion over it. But that wasn't enough for some men. They wanted more. When our fuel got low, they jacked up the prices so they could consolidate power into their own hands. So, we wanted to build dams for electricity. But their precious runs of salmon were more important than heating our homes. We wanted to cut a few trees to build those homes. But the nests of a few spotted owls were more important than the entire timber industry. Now that the feds have gone to ground, let's just say we've eliminated the middle name. No one can stop us from taking what's rightfully ours. This is Mark Copeland for Radio Free Oregon. Don't believe the lies. Thing is, Cope, fuel prices. <laughs>